Hi, this is Deepa Shankar and let's start doing GRE AWA section today. So what do I mean by AWA? It stands for Analytical Writing Assessment. Now this is the first part of the GRE test when you take it online. The first one hour of your test you'll be doing this exercise which is divided into two tasks. So why does GRE insist on having an AWA section? Now this section measures your writing abilities. The university applications, when you're done with the GRE and when you, you know, send out applications, they require a lot of essays in the form of statements of purpose, your letters of recommendation and such essays. Now, the university will have a good understanding of your writing abilities. You know that AWA measures the student's writing abilities. And you also know that university applications require several essays. You need to submit your statement of purpose and several such essays along with your application. Now, from your AWA score, the university knows of your writing skills. And you can't beat the system trying to get your essay written by someone else because your AWA score and your essays need to have some connection, right? So let's say you get your friend to write your essay, your SOP, and he writes it brilliantly. And maybe, you know, end up getting a 2 or a 3 in your AWA when you give your GRE. So there is obviously a discard and, you know, things get a little fishy in the university's perspective. So make sure you devote a little effort when you do the AWA preparation. It is indeed pretty important. So what is tested in this exercise? The AWA part measures the student's critical thinking, analytical writing and of course usage of written English. So your critical thinking becomes really important in this essay. You are given a topic that will test your critical thinking abilities and you'll be asked to write an analysis either of an issue or of an argument, right? We'll of course see the exercise topics with examples later, okay? So right here, you need to focus on content and then on your linguistic ability. Remember, linguistic ability is indeed important but what is more important is the content that you provide them in your essays. So I would put it this way, okay? So these two contribute to content and this is how you present it. Now remember that your linguistic ability need not be excellent in order to get a good score. Make sure you do not make any common mistakes and trust me, if the content is good, you indeed get a good score. Now let's see the tasks that you have in the AWA section. There are, as I told you, two tasks. One, analysis of an issue. And the second one, analysis of an argument. Each task is 30 minutes long. So for the first one hour of your GRE, you'll be writing essays. In the first task, that is the analysis of an issue, you are given an issue, something that is globally recognized. Remember that it is not something that requires specific knowledge, okay? It is very general and you are required to analyze this issue. For this, you are given 30 minutes. You are to present an argument defending for the topic or offending, meaning you go against the topic. So you present a very logical argument favoring or against the given issue topic. Now we move on to the next task, analysis of an argument. That again is for 30 minutes. Here it's dynamically opposite to what you do in the first topic. Here you have an argument that is already given to you and it is your job to find out flaws, if any, in that argument. Next, we go on to see what the AWA scoring is all about. AWA scores range from zero to six in half point increments. That means 
that your scores typically are 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5 and 6. So, 0 is the worst score possible and 6 is the best score possible. Of these, remember that 4 and above are considered good. So, please aim for around 5. The reported score is the average of the scores of the two tasks. Let's look into the score level descriptions next. Okay, so let's start from the best possible score, that's 6. 6 means you've done very well, you've been excellent. Okay, so 5.5 and 6, it means that your analysis is very sound, it's in-depth, essay is well focused and organized, the logical part of it is uncontested, your examples are very persuasive and you have precise vocabulary. Now remember you needn't have excellent vocabulary but a precise vocabulary is what you need. Along with your vocabulary is the grammar part and your contextual usage. Remember not to use certain words grammar constructs or phrases if you are not aware of the perfect usage. So it is better to avoid if you are not sure. How many of you can spell the word exaggerate? Does it have double G or double R? So if you are confused here, remember not to use the word at all. I can also think of a contextual usage that might confuse a few. What do you think is the metaphorical meaning of the term, turn the tables? So you can do a little homework today. Don't use such phrases if you are not aware of the contextual meaning. Remember that 5.5 or 6 may or may not include minor language errors. As I told you earlier, content is more important than linguistics. So you need not spend too much of time thinking of florid words. Yeah, you might as well concentrate on getting better content ideas. So that is about an essay that gets 5.5 or 6. Next, we come to the range 5 to 4.5. This again is a good score, trust me. It tells you that your analysis is very thoughtful, logic is sound, your examples are well chosen and you have a good vocabulary and of course it might have minor errors, right? We come to the score range 3.5 to 4. It means that your analysis is competent, you have a reasonable clarity meaning you drive across whatever you want to say. Your language is satisfactory and you might have certain errors that affect clarity. Remember by clarity here I mean your ideological clarity. Trust me you should not be playing around with phrases if you don't know the meaning. I repeat, I reiterate because it affects your score. Okay, so 2.5 and 3. It means that your analysis is limited, your organization is very weak, your writing skills are flawed and your errors, your linguistic errors result in a general lack of clarity. The professor does not get what you are trying to say at all. Next, we come to 1.5 or 2. You have serious weaknesses in analytical writing, meaning your writing is just not good. Next, 0 0.5 and 1. This is very demeaning, remember, and even if you do manage to get a good GRE score in quants and the verbal part, if you get a bad score in the AWA part, it does not look good in the application scenario. Okay, so 0 0.5 or 1, it means that you have fundamental deficiencies in writing. Okay, and then comes 0. You get a 0 if your responses are irrelevant. Let's say you have written an excellent essay, but not for the given topic. You'll end up getting a 0 for that because the response is irrelevant.
If you end up writing a response in German, French or any such language, again you get a zero. If you display indecipherable text, meaning something that is not understood by the professor, again you stand to get a zero. Apart from these numerical scores, you might also get an NS, meaning not scored. So if that's the case, you have not produced any text whatsoever. So that is about score level descriptions. I think I made myself very clear. Aim for something around 5. Range 4 to 6 is considered good. So how important are your AWA scores? As I told you earlier, an AWA score tells the university how good you are with writing and with general language abilities. So make sure you get at least 4 in conclusion. Now if you structure your essay, it becomes very easily readable and you know your key points just pop out of the essay so the prof has absolutely no difficulty in getting what you are trying to say. Next is practice. Remember that the word processor that GRE uses does not have spell check or autocorrect functions. So practice typing your essays within 30 minutes in a notepad. A notepad does not have autocorrect functions or spell check for that matter. So it would be better if you practice with that. I would advise you against using a paper and a pen because if you have any difficulties using a keyboard, this should not eat into your time. So make sure you practice along with a keyboard so that you have good chances of getting admitted into the university.